Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please help me appreciate my brother Apostle Kratos. You know, sometimes when you have when you have friends that talk that talks too much just like you, it becomes a body. That is why many professors don't agree in one place. If you have too many professors teaching you a course, you'll be very confused. It's not your fault, it's their fault. Because they will never agree. Because all of them are reading too much. Okay, and also help me appreciate my, my, my other brothers. Apostle Paul, uh, the, the theologian. The only th- oh, there are two now. There's another theologian. The graduated theologian. Steadfast just came in now. Please appreciate him. And your, your camp commander, my, 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 my other cousin, and my second cousin, the only cousin I always call cousin, the one that can preach closing his eyes. Please appreciate him. Uh, please appreciate yourselves. Okay, appreciate Bishop, Bishop Joe. See Bishop Joe there. See Solomon there, Prophet Solomon. And only Joshua Simon's son, where is he? Apostle, how are you doing? My friend of what I told you. It is well. Uh, we trust God that today we will be able to learn a lot again. Knowing fully well that how much more we learn in the kingdom is an advantage. I've always said that people that will do better than you in this kingdom are not magicians. There are people that know better than you or they are praying more than you. And the funny thing about this thing is that you can decide both to pray more and to also know more. You are the one that chooses either to be a prayer person and refuse the place of knowledge, or you choose either to be a knowledgeable person and refuse the place of prayer. In the order in the kingdom, we are demanded to become everything that Christ Jesus can be. And Christ Jesus being the pattern man, he embraced the apostolic, he embraced the prophetic, he embraced everything that constitutes for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And it is true that a believer will be defective if he does not understand how to subscribe to all the possibilities that lies in God. God is not limited. Men are limited. And the limitation of men comes in their inability to humble themselves to learn from God on a daily basis. And the challenge is this. God cannot be learned by man. God will have to be revealed to man. And the challenge is this. It will take you too many years for the whole of God to be revealed to you. So there are men that God has revealed himself to them. And they are like shortcut, like ladders for you. So that you can be able to advance faster. And that is why if you don't know how to pray, you may not have to go and study for seven years. All what you have to do is to stand by an atmosphere people that pray. Grace knows no age. It knows no years. So when the Lord lighten upon you suddenly, the grace will begin to function so you become a young Asian. Not because you are ancient, no. But because the grace of an ancient personality lies upon you. And that is why God is Asian in himself. But when he begins to deposit himself upon you, you may look very small, but they begin to see an expression of an ancient personality that is inside of you. And that is why the knowledge of God can only be communicated to people that are humble enough. Not them that believe that they know. Because many more dimensions of God may be hit upon this guy. And you may think that this guy is of no importance. But many more times when God begins to advance, that is why he will always refer you to people. And if you claim that you are all knowing, then I assure you, you have already missed it. Because it's impossible for God to work with only you. Because the same way God is helping you, is helping 1,000 people. And to each and every person that God is helping is communicating a kind of dimension to him. There are certain people that no matter how good your preaching is, you may never change them. It will require the grace of another kind of person to change them. And that person, you, may need the, that kind of person grace to be able to change other people within that same line. And that is why you'll be limited in the body of Christ. If all what you think you know is what they taught you in your theological schools. Because there's another school where they approve and accredit men in the order of God. That what they teach you there, they didn't teach them, but they still represent Jesus Christ. So what you need to know for you to be able to be relevant within the sphere of influence, where those guys can represent Jesus, is to align together with them and partner with them in grace so that it can be a fusion of those their possibilities. Then afterward, you cannot become a full representative of Jesus Christ upon the face of the earth. There was a dimension that was shown to Peter. No matter how good Peter was, he became a dangerous apostle to the Gentiles. If left to Peter, if God decided to work with only Peter, Peter would never have converted any one Gentile person because it was a taboo for a Jew to die with a Gentile. How can he not be able to communicate God to them effectively well? He felt they are not circumcised. 
but there was a dimension of God that was what are working at Paul that was able to deliver Gentiles and as a result of that it may be hard for Peter to accredit of Paul but he will say that the same grace that was, that, that, that was at work in Peter to make him an apostle unto the Jew is the same grace that was at work in me Paul to make me an apostle unto the Gentiles and no matter what Peter did it will never be lower than what Paul did why? Because the operations of God is in diversities. And if you don't understand that, you will think that everybody is of no importance. And the truth is this, in this kingdom, there are different kinds of functionaries. There are people that may never, you see, you may never even hear about them, but the reason why we are standing is because of them. Many of us, we have prayed into this thing. Then what about the people that pray us into this thing? Do you realize that far before Paul became born again, there were people that were representing Jesus. There were many apostles then. There were many disciples of Jesus then that you don't even know about them. But you may think that they are irrelevant, but it was their labor that ensured that Jesus Christ encountered Paul. So they are as more important than Paul. Mind you, those guys were part of the people that Paul go to for counseling. And they mentor him effectively well. All what God gave unto him was a kind of grace that will find expression through the Gentiles. And because the Gentile is a very light spam of people. So as a result of that, you now see that although Jesus Christ was able to minister to just only few people, but these guys came with a multifaceted dimension of grace and they were able to reach a thousand. Jesus Christ did not mean that to one million people. But there are people in the body of Christ today that can do that. Does that mean that they are higher than Jesus? No. It's the multiplicity of the dimension of the grace of Jesus. As of that time, he came only for the lost house of Israel. He could not even mean that to a Gentile. In fact, when Jesus Christ saw the Gentile, then he could not include them into the code. It was not his own jurisdiction. But the grace still found expression through him, order to his own protégés, so that they can be able to do that jurisdiction. So what I need to understand is that you are effective. You are important in the operations of God. Many years ago, we thought we were nothing. We thought that all that we were was just normal us. We never know that there was something that God was doing inside of us that would make us become effectively representative. What I need you to understand is this, that you are not today standing here does not mean they are not important. And the funny thing about this is that you will discover that after many years ago, there are many people that you have done all of this together that you may never advance. And the reason why they will not advance, one of the things I want to tell you today, is the motive of the heart of a person. And that is why God has no restraint either to conquer with a many or to win with a few. No matter how desperate God is, you will never use a man that has a wrong motive. Because you know the man will be a disadvantage to the kingdom. And that's why a man says a gifted rebel is never an asset. One of the only ways that you can be aligned to God to become an asset sufficiently well, God does not care whether you're a prostitute. He only cares if you are willing to be helped by him. Because the secret is how much more to be helped by God. If God can help you sufficiently well, he will give you a strength that can overrun many. And it doesn't matter whether Paul gave, gave his life to Christ very late. He didn't even see Jesus in the flesh. But one third, do you know that there was a reason why most of his books were included in the scripture? Not because other apostles did not write. I read many of their own books. They wrote. But according to the canonical definition, according to how much more these things should be written so that people can believe in Jesus. If they include those other ones, they will confuse the people the more. So they decide to cast away their own. I include many of Paul because Paul was balanced. He was able to understand. Paul, sometimes you wonder, is he a Jew? Is he a Gentile? God had to walk the feelings of a Jew, walk the feelings of a Gentile, make him look as though he's corn in his own way. The reason is so that he can convert many more people that Peter cannot do. So the workings of God upon you doesn't matter how much an Ambroba you are. You can be able to convert many Ambroba that no matter how bishop you're able to try to do, you won't convert them. My apostle was telling me one time he has never stayed with any, I have stayed with many ladies. Sir. So that it's easier for me to talk to prostitutes. If you take me to a hotel, I'll convert some of them. Why? Because I know what to tell them. But you may not even know what to tell them because you don't even know how the thing works. So there are many ways that God will work to different kinds of people so that he can ensure that he work a protocol for his kingdom's sake. Because there must be witnesses in all of those regions. And how can God achieve that? He must have to reach out to the least among us. One among us that is despised to be nothing. For God to... See, there are certain people that only people may be able to reach them. And that's why there are people that God will never give them a miracle. Their miracle is that they will be able to represent God as cripples. And because of that, when they stand before cripples, cripples will, be, cripples will begin to see the possibility that how much more them people can serve God being cripples. There are people that God may never open their deaf ear, but they will be able to hear with the deaf ear. And they can be able to function and they present God. So when they stand by the deaf, they will let the deaf understand this is not a limitation. Because in the realm of the spirit, the blind man sees. In the realm of the spirit, the deaf man hears. No man that if you see in the spirit that doesn't have eye to see and ear to hear. Even if you are creepy, if you see yourself in the realm of the spirit, you will have legs. No spirit being is deficient. 
because according to the order of God, everything you think to see as a limitation in the physical is never a limitation in the spirit. That may even be your advantage. That may even be the reason why you, see, you don't even know why God allowed you to pass through many of things you pass through so that you can have a voice in the nation. Josimea understand this after many years of cries and pain. She never knew that the reason why God allowed her to go through all the kind of raves. You see, she doesn't need all this, uh, what do you call it, feminine gender to define that. No, she needs the God of Israel to help her. And when he helped her, she discovered that one million, thousands of other millions of people are in the same situation as, the, as she is. And she's the only one that can talk to her and they can understand. What I want you to understand is this. There is something that God is doing with you here that no matter how we try to achieve it, we may not be able to achieve it. It will require God to help you. Everything we think we are doing here right now is just to be able to align your heart and right so that God can continually help you. Because until God helps you as a being, there is no way you are going to go. Because man is designed to always fail. Man, in fact, from the very beginning of man, man was misaligned from God. In fact, from the very day that God created man, it didn't take many days, man began to misalign. That is that deep within the nature of man was never for man to remain aligned to God. Alignment will require God to consistently push you through to ensure that you advance and fulfill this kingdom. And that's why I say that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. It doesn't matter whatsoever through you have gone through. It's part of the author and the finish of that. All your choices are, you see, if there's a call of God upon your life, if you like, in saw Jesus, one day he will appear to you. He's the author and the finisher. And the man now asked me, I said, if that's the situation, then why do we have to, we say we know people that will go to hell, people that will go to hell. That's to tell you that there is still the partnership of man required to function with God. And that's why even for you to be born again, you must have to make the choice. Although the Spirit of God will aid you. But what will determine this choice is the motive of the heart of a man. And that's why we let you understand that God will convert many Boko Haram. God will convert many Muslims because they are serving him eh, with the right motive but in the wrong place. If your motives are right, and even if you are doing the wrong thing, God will encounter you. But if your motives are wrong, even if you are doing the right thing, you will perish and go to hell. It's better than the days of ignorance that God continues to permit so that your motive can actually be right and your actions are wrong. But by the time that God begins to give you light and your motive now become wrong and your actions also become wrong, you are going to be judged for it. Before we sit in one minute, can you help me with that song? I don't know how to sing very much, but you must bear my crocodile voice. That's how much God has helped me so far. And when you pray, sometimes your voice is tuned and disaligned. Even guitar does that. Okay? I trust God. I won't take too much time. You see, that's why most of I don't preach with you. So, but when they gave me the topic, I discovered that it was what God was talking to me that as I was writing, it was me. So I would just read from what God talked to me and move. Okay, so where the book ends, that's all. Okay, so don't worry. Anyway, forever. Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, you are the king. Anyway, forever. Adonai, Adonai. Yahweh Elohim, you are the King, and you are the King forever. Yahweh you are the King, and you are the King forever. You are the king, you are the king and you reign forever. E Adonai, Adonai, Yahweh Elohim. You are the king, you are the king and you reign forever. E Adonai, Adonai. You are the king, are the king. and you are forever. E Adonai, Adonai, you are the king, are the 
Bible says, likewise, the spirit had better our infirmity. Yeah, we do not know how we should pray as we ought to. The spirit help, the spirit help. It is the job description of the Holy Ghost to help us. We can only advance to the degree to which he help us. We are weak and feeble men. We desire the help of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Can you take your seat as we... Sorry to my friend, I cannot prophesy. You only gave me very limited time. Even fake prophet take time to prophesy. What about true prophet? Now, if we say we want to begin to speak to you, in, you know, counseling is one of the things that takes more time. An average minister that do counseling requires times two of the strength of the grace of God. And that's why many ministers are not accessible, not because of anything. They are always tired. Because nobody will come and meet you for five minutes. 
when they come to meet you five minutes, they will explain something for two hours. And they expect you to talk for another one hour. That's three hours. And out of 24 hours, if you have met like seven people in a day, you don't have a day for yourself. And if you truly want to grow in God, the more, the more you grow in God, the more God hide you. The more God tries to want more of you. I don't know you get it now. So you used to play one hour before your hands shake. You used to do small things and you feel the anointing. Now, it doesn't work that way. You must have to go deeper. Because everything you think you know becomes a foundation to build upon. I get what I'm saying now. And that is why if you do not actually dwell with God most times a lot, you discover that all what you are doing is that you are, you are revolving around a body of knowledge you think you know. Men that truly advance in God, they have to eat more. The secret in this is to eat more. And that's why when I see the desperation and the hunger, many of you are wonder. Let me tell you the truth. If you truly, truly love God, the time is going to come you feel as though your school is a distraction. Not because of anything, but now suddenly, you will, there is God, you are in the classroom. God does not care whether you're in the classroom. He's demanding your attention. A burden is there. Sometimes you want to eat food, God demands, not that he's stopping from eating food, he didn't say you fast, but somehow there are tongues that are still coming out. And as you are trying to eat food, he's trying to teach you something. And you are supposed to write what he's teaching you. But you may neglect it. You don't know that. Me, I can be in the bike as I'm in the bike. God is I'm trying to type it. Not as if I'm on WhatsApp. No, I'm trying to type what God is teaching me. But you don't give that attention. So you now wake up. When you are tired in the evening, you now come for one 10 minutes. You don't know that. You don't command God in this. He prompts you when he desires. But you need to be led by the Spirit of God. I had a man say, if God does not move, you move God. That's not the God I know. You can't move God. You don't even know where God is. How can you move him? It's by mercy that he gave you the ability to speak for him. So anytime you even speak and God hearken unto it, eh, you should even be glad. That's why after everything, you should return back and thank God again that he's still with you. Because if you think that you can rise again, you read the scripture. Samson. You know, when he was done, he rose again and died. And he, he took the gate up. He doesn't know, you see, where the mercy of God stopped, eh? you are going to be dying. The grace of God will only be there for you. It will only be sufficient. But sometimes when you continue your iniquity and darkness, you think that that is the approval of God. No, it's the mercy of God. Because God chooses to show mercy to whoever he chooses to show mercy to. But where his mercy cannot reach you, you are dead. Nothing will bail you out again. I'm telling you the truth. God himself will open the ground and he will bury you. I get what I'm saying now. So sometimes you have to be very, very careful. It doesn't matter how much you are. I'm telling you, I, you see, I will not pour you to say something that nobody is irreplaceable, right? You are not the Holy Ghost. God can do without you. God made you. God is the one that helped you to become who you are. It's possible for him eh, to also throw you away and pick another person again. You know, Jesus began to boast about this. He said, if you refuse to do this, I will raise stones. The truth is, stones have never been used to serve the purpose of God before. He will not do that, but try, try, try to let you understand that he will, lay, he will raise the least among you can never even imagine. Do you know, you are not the only one pointing to God. There are many people that are praying and shouting, and God did not even see them to even reveal himself to them. If he reveal himself to you, it's a privilege. Never take that one for granted. Anytime you come before the presence of God, let your heart be open. Ensure that you are getting something. You know, I saw the way some of you people are very lazy with what is going on here. I'm like, this is how great people are built. I'll show you the truth. You are serious with everything, but when it comes to God, in vain. You can't learn God for four years and graduate. It's a lie. You won't get a certificate. I'm telling you. You have to continue. You have to continue. And the problem is this, the more you go deeper, the more you need to know more. If not, you won't survive. I'm telling you, you will never survive. You will never survive. As you rise in life, you rise via warfare. So the darkness that is rising commensurately as you are rising is enough to surmount you. As you are growing, maybe before darkness that surrounds you, maybe maybe 15 demons. Now, you have advanced more. They now added like 20 more again. So if you refuse to advance, they will pull you down. Will rise by warfare, and that's why the warfare will continually increase. I remember one time that I always go through all kinds of warfare, and I said, God, why all of these things? Ah, he said, Philip, if you don't rise up and grow in the realm of the spirit, there is ranking. 
Anyone that is above you will suppress you. It doesn't matter the rank it. The person is in darkness. And that's why Babala will kill pastors. We only talk about the story of pastors that came and entered one house and all of them died. Why? Because an Akongo is there. And antiquity is inside the place. You can die a very cheap death. I always say, if you, with that power, right, a Babala will stay in the bush and kill you with your seeking the kingdom. Many of you are seeking the kingdom while are seeking it at Fazali. If you don't know the God very well, you will die and Jesus will still be Lord. It won't change anything. So please, when you have the privilege to learn God like this, take it very, very serious. Because if you despise it now here, I know that even if you go out there, you will still do the same thing. Even if Baba Lola appear here and is teaching her here, you will not gain as much as you are gaining now. It's your motive, it's your heart posture. It is funny enough that if Jesus Christ is to come alive now again, here now, people, people that will crucify him, some of them will be here too. What makes you think that, you see, that's how this thing works. Many of people who celebrate today, they were not celebrating their own time. The people you appreciate, the people you, somebody will insult their grandfather, don't care. That's how this thing works. So you must place value on anything that you think is worthy of need. Okay? So let's see how we can be able to advance to learn some basic things. That's all. I trust God to be brief enough since I have a book with me. The Holy Ghost will not overshoot. Okay? What we are sharing to you here, I discovered that almost everybody that came here did teach. Nobody preached. And if you have been consistent enough, you understand the difference between preaching and teaching. The goal of teaching is to be able to bring you to a point where you understand laws and principles so that you can apply them. I get what I'm saying now. The goal of preaching is to bring you to a point where you are heightened in the spirit to be able to gain access to instructions. But it's possible that men can have access to preaching. They will be very excited. They will fall under the anointing. They will stand up again and return back to the same thing that they're doing. Why? There are no ways of God. There are no principles. There are no laws set by that can help them be able to acclimatize themselves with the current circumstances that has befallen them. That is why we need to teach people. Jesus Christ teach and he preach. I get what I'm saying now. It's very, very important. So when we are teaching like this, there are principles that are being shared that you must take them into heart. Okay. You know, in, in, in preaching, somebody can just come here and just say, for your life to advance in God, you must understand the priesthood tone of Melchizedek and how it alignment to the portals of heaven is sure. You see, you may think you like what I said, but you don't even know anything I said. Why? Because if I ask you what's alignment, you don't even know. What's potash, you don't even know. What's priest, you don't even know. What's mechanism, you don't even know. So that's preaching. And you'll be excited because I will say it upon the unction of the spirit and you enjoy it. But after you go back, when situation be cloudy, you are not thinking, what is even the alignment against it? What does that even mean against it? What's the say now I want to align, but you don't even understand what it is. But in teaching, somebody will have to they will have to bring you the point where you understand what's alignment, what is priesthood, what is potters, then what is your own responsibility in keeping to those things. I get what I'm saying now. And that is why we are doing, we are taking the thing very, very gradual like this so that you can be able to understand. In preaching, nobody cares whether you understand. As long as the spirit moves. I get what I'm saying. In teaching, you must have to be able to understand. And when you are raising people, what you do is that you teach them. You never go to Boko Haram come and see them folding them under anointing. That is not important. Because if they are not sure of the teaching, the indoctrination upon them, they may take that bomb to the marketplace and want to turn back. They will be emotional. How, how can I keep you? How can I? Be? Because now you just preach to them. But by the time you indoctrinate them very, very well, you, you take away their will and their consciousness, take away their emotions. They are willing to take a bomb and go and bomb their fathers. That's the goal of teaching, to bring you to a point where you are willing to die for something. Because it's established a lot of things in your head. It bombards your mind so much that anytime you want to even sin, thin quote enter your head. You just be imagining what you said, that this one will destroy your life. Hey, you'll be afraid. You not think of the other scripture, you'll be afraid. You think about maybe if you are falling down and around the phone. When you are there, you are gone. 
So the goal of teaching is to put a lot of words inside of you so that you will not sin against God. I get what I'm saying. That's why you must take this in very, very serious. And you must write something. Me, I believe you have not written anything. You are, you are very, very unserious. I mean, like seriously over unserious. An average, an average of you don't listen to messages. An average of you don't even read book. An average of you don't even watch. Don't download. Uh, if they want to download, download. They go to local TVs. And all those boys before flowers, boys after flowers. I think there are boys standing by flower now. They are wasting your destiny. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling you. Sometimes when God wants to advance you, you check the commercial level of impact you have made in your input in your destiny. Okay. Um... The truth is this, if you are aligned to God, you always find strength for the journey ahead. Anytime you begin to not feel the strength of God upon your life, it's because you are misaligned. I don't really know how it feels to be a backslider. Why? I have never backslidden. So I can't communicate well to you. But I can tell you when I was before. I get what I'm saying now. The truth is, if you are always current with God, if you are always aligned to God, you will always find the strength of God to continue to help you in time of need. Anytime you begin to feel weary, check again. There may be some distraction. There may be certain things that have shifted. Because the same way that you hold on to God daily before pursuing with the whole of your heart, and you're willing to die for the cause, suddenly something was able to take the center posture. Because in this kingdom, there is what I call priority. You must set your priority alive. There are things that no matter how you do, I will never replace them for anything. Somebody like me, if a good job will make me not to serve Jesus well, I will, I will let it go. If a good wife, eh, who we'll talk about damn sir, Bishop, if a good wife, very good, you know that one guy told me there are some babies that when you look upon them, the burden upon your heart go away. I said, that's not the burden of Jesus. The burden of Jesus will never go away no matter you look upon your wife. I get what I'm saying. That's why you must marry an intercessor. If not, you are scam. I'm telling you serious. You are scam. You are going to die in time. Even if your wife hates you, she pray for you. You will live long. There may not be peace, but you will live long. Now I'm telling you the truth. Because intercessors, what they do is that they preserve life of people. Their own life needs to also be preserved. By who? By God. But they preserve your own. Many men die before their time because their wife are not praying. I'm telling you the truth. 